Okay, in this video I explain how to change the batteries in a rechargeable vacuum machine. It's an Electrolux Ergo Rapido. And this is the part that you can detach from the actual vacuum machine. So you can use like to clean the car or something like that outside your home. I put, I remove the part where the dust is stored because it's not relevant for this video. So what's the problem with these machines is that the lifespan of the battery is very short. Many people report it in a forum in internet that some of them fail like one or two years after. So if you are in warranty period, Electrolux will provide you a new one because they admit there is like a defect or something. But if you are not in a warranty period, Electrolux will not pay you anything. So it can happen that you have the battery for two years and after two years and one month if the battery fails. So that's it. Yeah. To replace the battery, it's like 40 euros or so, so it's not that uh, economical. So what I did is to try to replace by myself with uh, some other uh, battery that I can provide. So if we look inside, this is the motor. Here there is the turbine that aspirates the air after filtering it. And here we have some circuit, cir circuitry. I already removed the batteries. Here we have some of the batteries that I removed. Actually, there are 10 of these nickel metal, I don't know if it's metal hydro or anyway, nickel MH. Actually, I have a picture of the process because I didn't take a video. So here we see six of the batteries. Now here there are eight and two more outside the frame. And we see that they are attached in a fuse. And if we pay attention, these batteries are connected in series. So this pair of batteries, we see a cable entering here and one get, getting out here. So this connected in series. So actually we have 10 nickel metal, metal hybrid batteries connected in series, with, which make up a voltage of 12 volts because each cell is 1.2 volts. And in addition, we don't have any balancing circuit. It means that the batteries are charged applying a voltage of 12 volts in the two extremities of this 10 cell um, row. And these are really bad charging method because some batteries will get slightly overcharged because not all of them are the same. And these batteries will die and that's why this battery pack has so short lifespan. Actually, what it should be done is to put some connectors in each of the joints. So actually for a 10 cell battery will be uh, the plus and minus and plus nine wires going to the circuitry. And each one of these wires will control the voltage in each actual, actual cell to make sure you don't overcharge each of the cells. So because the circuit is very poor and I don't want to spend money with new batteries to replace it and then these new batteries will die in a very short time, I just removed all these batteries and I will put a lithium battery in here. At the beginning I was thinking about putting a lithium polymer because in the internet there is, a, the, there is some tutorial of a guy who puts a lithium polymer. Actually he removes all the circuit, puts the lithium polymer here and wires directly the lithium polymer. He says to some circuit board that is attached to the, to the motor. But actually you see here there is no circuit board attached to the motor. So I don't know how to do this because this model is slightly different. I need this pusher which is attached to the circuit. If I attach directly to the motor I will, I will need to add some switch to switch on and off the battery, the, the vacuum machine. So what I was thinking about is to in the input and output points where these uh, 10 cells in series were connected, I will put uh, three lithium ion in series. So I will use a laptop battery pack. If we put three lithium ion in series, it makes up 4.2 times three is uh, 12.6. So it's 0.6 volts higher than the original voltage. I think this will be tolerated by the circuit. And then we can use the battery in the same way as it was designed before with this pusher. 
And in addition, I think this will disconnect the batteries when they get below around 10 volts because nickel metal hybrid is, has a 1.2 volt charge uh, voltage and around 1 volt discharge, which means 10 times 1 is 10 volts. And this is very convenient because if it disconnects the lithium ion at 10 volts, it means we don't get below the 3.3 the volts per cell, which is perfect. So that's my proposal. I will use some of these batteries. I have many lying around. Like uh, this is a very old Samsung with very few capacity, like 900 or 1000 mAh, but I have been using it a lot. This is a newer Sony with 2000 mAh and a good current capacity, uh, sorry, current capability. And what I will do in the first moment is to attach the battery outside with some scotch and put some wires getting into the circuitry. And if this works, and eventually I can just, when the battery is over, I remove it from here and I charge in the laptop to which it belongs. And if this proves to work, what I will do in the next video is to uh, buy a lithium polymer and try to fit it inside if it's possible. And if it's not possible, I will just leave the lithium polymer outside. And as you know, the lithium polymer has the output wires that I will solder into this board. And they also have the balancing wires, which I, I will let them go outside. In this way, I can do two things. One is to balance charge the batteries from the outside and to check the voltage eventually to know how, how much time of use of this vacuum machine I have till the next charge. And uh, I think it's all for this video. I will keep you updated how this project works and if I can revive this vacuum machine with a defective battery pack. See you in the next video. Bye.